All right. Welcome, everyone, to Hear Me Out Podcast. My name is Franco. I'm joined today by my co-host, Dro. How are you doing, Dro? You're good as always, man. And we're also honored to have here the uh, communications director of Hard Lens Media, uh, Kit Cabello. How are you doing today, sir? Well, first, it's really good to be on your show. Uh, I really am glad to have this opportunity to be uh, on a new uh, progressive media network so that, you know, we can keep on collaborating, speaking truth to power, and more importantly, uh, giving a voice to the voiceless because that's what independent media is about. And I'm really glad to see more and more people starting to step up because obviously CNN, Fox News, NBC, CBS, and all these other media outlets, they're spitting out this propaganda of corporate media all the while keeping the rest of us ignorant, ignoring the fact that we have political corruption, police brutality, police corruption. We're dealing with an environmental crisis, a pandemic, and an economic crisis, the likes of which we have never seen. And they're not talking about the issues at hand. But you don't want to know who is? It's the activists on the ground. It's the community organizers on the ground. It's the protesters doing the thing. And more importantly, it's also independent uh, progressive media individuals who are stepping up, starting their own content, whether they're in Chicago, LA, Philadelphia, Miami, New York, or anywhere else across this country, because people need to start speaking up. We just can't rely on one source or one area. Everyone needs to start speaking up because this is a nationwide problem, and the media is no longer doing it. The media is no longer the force to stop. The media is now at this point beholden to the corporate donors, the same corporate donors who own the DNC and the RNC. And that's a fact. And if people don't like it, well, hey, this is a fact and they don't care about your feelings. So I'm taking that from Ben Shapiro because that guy is a complete idiot. He doesn't even know what WAP is. So yeah. (laughs) As you can see, there's a lot of fire here in this podcast tonight, and there's a a lot of fire that comes into play when it comes to what motivates us to start podcasts. Um, And part of that is like what Kit was mentioning, you know, we're sick and tired of the mainstream media setting a narrative that is, you know, what the corporations want us to think. Um, So let's hear a bit. Um, We're going to we're going to talk about the origin story of hard lens media and also the origin story of HMO podcast so that other people can get inspired to start their own podcast. So we're going to hear first from you, Kit, and then we'll hear from uh, Dro to talk about how he started HMO podcast. So let's hear from you first, Kit. What, how did how did you start uh, Hard Lens Media? What motivated you to start it? Well, we're going to rewind back the clocks. That's right. So we're going to time travel, everyone. Uh, we're going to go back to 2016 in Philadelphia the DNC convention at the Wells Fargo Center. Um, and for many people, especially Bernie Sanders supporters and progressives, um, this is reopening up an open wound uh, that has never really healed. We can never really that. There it is! <laughs> wow. Wow. Just thought, I, just thought I'd show you guys that one time. I heard Wells Fargo. I was like, well, I think I've seen that place. <laughs> yes, yeah. And, and here's the thing. Here's the thing. Yeah. Um, I love doing the road trip out to Philly because me and a few of my friends, we were deciding like, okay, this is when we didn't know what we were doing. We decided just to go to Philly and start filming and recording. And uh, this is pre hard lens media. We wanted to go there to see if maybe if there, there could be a hopeful scenario where Bernie Sanders could somehow pull this crisis out of a fire. Of course, I think we're all gravely mistaken of exactly how, far he would give in to the DNC. So on the fourth day, or or not on the fourth day, on the last day when uh, Hillary Clinton was to be nominated, myself and my colleague Daniel, we snuck inside the DNC convention, (laughs) and we didn't just go through the back door or some underground area. We walked through the front door with no press passes or anything. And mind you, this is the most heavily fortified area in Philadelphia the DNC convention, and we walked past security guards and everything else, and we were like, okay, let's cover this, let's do this, and we were doing it because we were hungry for it, and we successfully did it. We didn't get arrested. No one called us out. Um, We actually had somebody um, give us, like, press passes to go in, and um, (laughs) that person was so scared. I was like, dude, if you don't calm down, you're the one that's getting us in here. You're supposed to be calmed down, man. Like, if you get us caught, I'm going to be screaming at you the entire time we're locked up together. But uh, myself and my colleague Daniel got in, and when we were inside there, 
I couldn't tell the difference between a Trump supporter and someone who was trying to vote for Hillary Clinton because what we saw was Bernie Sanders supporters, delegates, and volunteers being verbally assaulted, harassed, and abused by Clinton delegates, Clinton supporters, and people within the DNC establishment. We were seeing violence. And everyone else, of course, who are associated with corporate media will say, oh, there was nothing but peace and love within the Wells Fargo Center. No, there wasn't. And especially not on the outside when there was like 100 police officers right outside um, by FDR Park, right? That's the one that's by Wells Fargo? Or, or am I thinking of a different park? Uh, right. I think I think you're thinking the right one. Yeah. So upon seeing this and in everything that we learned there, we made the decision of just, okay, obviously corporate media is not telling the truth. And TYT at the time was all in with Hillary Clinton. And as an independent media network, they weren't doing their job, at least from our perspective, of, of addressing the fact that there was election fraud and real abuse from the DNC. So me and Daniel, upon heading back to Chicago, decided um, to, to do something about it. And in 2017, uh, early January, I got a phone call from Daniel, and he was like, okay, here's what we're going to do. Let's create an independent media network. Let's be on the ground. Now, here's my advice to early podcasters and YouTube content creators. Yeah. Don't do what we did because, you know, we worked harder, not smarter. So we started off with a Galaxy S7 cell phone conducting interviews. No extra audio equipment. We're just there on the ground covering protests and events, going to uh, community organizing events, building up our reputation and showing people that we're here, that we're going to be around, that we're not going to go away. In fact, if you go to our older YouTube channel... Uh, you'll see some of our earlier work. We have like um, you know just limited technology, trying to film as best we can. But it, it it was our beginning. We started off in the streets in Chicago, talking to people that corporate media refused to talk to, talking to people who are actually trying to bring truth to power and trying to bring in real change into the city of Chicago because Chicago is a hyper segregated city. You know, there's a lot of income inequality here. There's a lot of police corruption and police brutality. There's a lot of political corruption here. And with this city, there's a million stories to be told here. And there are so many people that are trying to do good. What you see in, uh, on, on corporate media, the violence in Chicago, they're not showing you all of Chicago because there are good people here. There are people who are trying to do good, but it's not being covered because it's not sensational enough for corporate media. And it was difficult in a way because we didn't know what we were doing. We had to learn as we moved along, learning how to do Adobe Premiere from scratch, learning how to do video editing, audio editing, learning how to conduct interviews, building up our reputation and building trust with the community. And it's it was difficult. But I think the the, the how we were able to just take the hard road and just learn from our mistakes was enough was well we were able to build enough um learning experience to push forward to our next objective and that's how we got into radio so we were on two radio stations for about a year uh they were am stations but again learning as we uh, move along how to run a radio station or how to run a radio show how to do editing how to um conduct interviews and actually uh working with the radio uh team that was there uh, and then after that, we were also able to get onto public access and <sighs> having three seasons on television, which was fun. I never expected to be on TV or to be on uh, a, a, a television station where we could have three seasons. So, I mean, that, that, was, that, that was something that I never really expected. So I could say, like, yeah, I learned how to have my own TV show and have three seasons be on radio at the same time, but, and while we were still able to start up our YouTube channel, we were just posting content up there, but it wasn't daily content. I mean, yeah, we're posting up interviews, we're posting up protests, we're posting up content of our shows that's, uh, that was filmed on an earlier date, but it wasn't consistent content. And if you're gonna be on YouTube, uh, content is key. And if you're not consistent with it, um, YouTube's not going to show you any love to your channel. So in 2019, we left our television station. We left the radio stations. 
and we fully invested into starting our YouTube channel uh, in Daniel's old place. And we started up with just uh, a four camera setup. We started building up more, uh, get, getting better tech as we went along, getting better audio equipment. And as we were growing throughout the early parts of 2019, going into September, we finally reached our long-standing goal of getting our own place, our own studio that wasn't somebody else's house, but our place that we could run by ourselves and no one, no TV manager, no radio manager is going to tell us what we can and cannot do. And it was our viewers and subscribers that was able to help us out and we were able to really grow our content. And if I had to pick a time era from September of 2019 up to April of 2020, was the high point of our YouTube channel. We started off with almost zero subscribers to building up to 23,700 subscribers. And that was a golden period. But sadly, um, things started to change because YouTube and its algorithm was starting to heavily censor us. And I was getting uh, a lot of constant messages from our viewers and subscribers saying, hey, I was unsubscribed from your channel. Why did you unsubscribe? Uh, why was why, why did you unsubscribe me from your channel? And the thing is, here's a huge message out to anyone that's watching: No YouTuber has the ability to find somebody and randomly unsubscribe them from a channel. I mean, that's not in our power. I think you got to, you know, go through a whole bunch of red tape to do that to a person, and I think it's not even worth it. Then we're also getting messages of, hey, YouTube didn't notify me, and I always hit the ring bell notification. Hey, YouTube is hiding your live stream. YouTube's doing this. And then we were seeing all of our content being limited or being monetized. Oh, shit. And, and see, so, yeah, that's, that's what YouTube does. Sometimes it costs accidents on the side, too. <laughs> um, and it, it, it wasn't easy to see this because sometimes when we did our live streams, we would have 600 people or 700 people watching us when we went live and then slowly yeah. dwindling down to 100 or 60 or even 20 or even that, like the live stream just ending, not because of internet, but because of the fact that YouTube was doing this. And I know it seems crazy, but even when Jimmy Dore said, like, hey, double check that you're still subscribed, I was unsubscribed from Jimmy Dore's channel three times, and I never once hit that unsubscribe button. So it is a real thing, and it impacts a lot of content creators. So what I have to say to YouTubers, especially people who want to be involved in progressive independent media, or if you want to just do whatever you want on YouTube, is be careful what content you do put up, because the YouTube algorithm is designed to go after brand new content creators and suppress them. If you're not with the corporations, if you're not with establishment media, YouTube will censor you. And I remember a time when YouTube, especially on its trending pages, they would promote independent individual content creators, real people. But now when you go onto YouTube, what do you see on the trending page? You see stuff from CNN or ABC or Fox News or anywhere else. And it's like, no, I left television because I don't like standard television. I'm tired of the sitcoms that they produce, the not funny shows, the horrible news media that's being presented to us or anything else. I mean, none of it's entertaining, but yet here it is moving into our backyard. And with the YouTube suppression, it was starting to become pointless to really keep on putting content on our old channel. Our old channel was a ship that was sinking. And this was very difficult for us to do, but Myself and Daniel made the decision to shut down our older station, our, our, our older YouTube channel. Yeah. yeah. And we, we, we put three years into that channel. There's like 700 plus interviews on that channel. So much content. 2,000 plus videos. All of them being limited. All of them being demonetized. All of them being hidden. And shutting it down wasn't easy. But if we were truly dedicated to this, we had to hit the reset button. Yeah. And this is where I'm very grateful to our subscribers and to our Patreon supporters because they believe in us. Without them, our studio that we have wouldn't exist. Without their support and trust, what we have would not exist. The tech gear, the studio, um, the team... It, it, would, it would be non-existent were it not for the trust we were able to build over the years. 
And I'm proud to say that with our new HLM YouTube channel, with our podcast now, it has grown to 2,000 subscribers now. 2,100, I believe now. And the growth rate was much faster than we ever started off. Learning uh, the previous stuff that we've learned for the past three years, being fully dedicated to YouTube, we saw uh, exponential growth right now, and it's still continuing to grow. And it's because people like our content. But, of course, we do have to go back to our older channel to sometimes remind people, like, hey, we're still here. We're just on a different channel. Follow us over there. And we get people saying, wow, I'm just hearing about this now. And it's been a few months ago. So it's it, the fan base is still there. The support's still there. But the YouTube suppression is very real. And with any kind of controversial stories, we have to be careful. Because, we again, I don't, I don't want to say... <clears throat> there, there's an individual in the UK that's right now being questioned, you know, so I can't really say his name because the YouTube algorithm will go after him or go after any content that, that's talking about him. Um, same thing with police corruption or police brutality, protest videos, or uh, a certain individual that somehow passed away in a New York prison facility. We can't talk about him either. So any of those controversial stories, um, we go to Rockfin, and at least on Rockfin, uh, they've been very good to us, and it's refreshing to hear um, human contact and not dealing with the YouTube AI saying, oh, well, if you check mark these boxes, everything will be fine. Rockfin, they, they treat us pretty good, and, you know, we have two other YouTube channels that we've created, so we're on four different platforms because if YouTube wants to play the, you know, screw around game, um, we're going to play it Chicago style. You're not going to get rid of us that easy. We're going to come back much stronger, we're going to come back aggressive, and we're going to come back unapologetic. And to any YouTuber that's getting involved in this, uh, especially being involved in social media, the thing I got to say to you is um, the rewards are incredible. It's, out, it, it, it's incredible to know that you build a strong fan base and support and people who care for your content. Um, the consequence, though, is you have to deal with the media censorship. Uh, you have to deal with, of course, those who are critical of your content. And you have to deal with the fact that you are making a lot of sacrifices. And if you cannot deal with the bad, um, walk away. It's, it's, it's not worth your time. It's, it, it'll be, if it's too overwhelming for you, this isn't the career you need. But if you're willing to suck it up, if you're willing to take the hits, if you're willing to take the criticism, if you're willing to put in the time, the rewards are... Rewards are just incredible. Yeah, and and, that's and, just and, and, and and when you're speaking truth to power, when you're covering stories that corporate media is not covering, when you're giving a platform to activists and community organizers or progressive candidates that are running for office, you're giving a voice to the voiceless, and that's what everyone should be doing right now: stepping up and speaking, not holding back, and keep on pushing forward. You know, a hard lens media, you know, uh, I was, I like to say it's, it's a strong name, but we were on a hard road and we're still on that hard road. But if we can walk through it, anybody can walk through it. It's just, are you hungry for it? Are you, are you aggressive enough to bring in change? And are you willing to put in the time? Are you willing to do the work that CNN, Fox News and ABC and CBS refuse to do? Are you willing to speak truth to power and become the new force of stock? Are you willing to hold those in power accountable? Because people need to know what's going on. And with everything that we're dealing with, with this pandemic, with this economic crisis, with this housing crisis, with climate change, we need to organize, plan, and speak truth to power and give a voice to all those who cannot speak. It's, it's definitely a, a really hard uphill battle for smart, small channels to start now. Um, you know, it's it's a lot harder now than it was, you know, even two years ago, maybe even like a year ago uh, for small channels to start up. They're afraid of small voices and more voices speaking truth to power. Um, so uh, I want to bring in uh, Pedro and Brooks here uh, about how you guys started HMO Podcast. Um, it, did, it didn't start on YouTube first, right? And then we transitioned to YouTube and we've had some obstacles and... Part of that reason is, you know, Kit brought up two gentlemen that we can't talk about. Uh, one of them is in, you know, was uh, supposedly uh, killed himself uh, in, in prison in New York. And the other one is being tortured right now in Belmarsh Prison. Um, so uh, could you guys go ahead and tell us, you know, how, how you guys got started? Well, Hear Me Out podcast is 
you know, I, you hit it on the head, Kit. It's giving a voice to the voiceless and being able to use a platform to speak on issues that people tend to shy away from. So in our case, we didn't really start anything outside of just sports. We wanted to do a sports podcast because Brooks is a sports blogger. I was yep. doing my own individual sports podcast. We both kind of liked each other's work, got together and was like, hey, man, let's start up a group, do a podcasting group, just, you know, more on the hobby end of things. We were just posting on SoundCloud, not really editing anything, just kind of recording and putting it out there. Really just uh, testing the waters for the most part. And, you know, just bought some equipment, went right ahead and, and did it. One thing that content creators or people that look to start creating content have a, a problem with is getting started. They say, oh, I need this. I need that. I need you just need to stop thinking and just get whatever it is. You know, even if it's your cell phone that has a recorder on, you can go right ahead and do it like that. Right. And that's what we did. We just got what we needed, got started. And over time, we started interviewing people for things other than sports. We started talking about music and kind of expanding our topics a little bit, Brooks and I. And uh, originally it was me, Brooks, Brady, um, my friend Buzzy. I'm drawing a blank. I'm drawing Simon. Simon. Simon is the fourth. Yeah. Yo, yeah. So so Simon was the fourth, and um, yeah, it it was really just like I said on the hobby end of things at first until we realized we can actually say things that let's say 30, 40 people are going to catch on to, right? And that thirty and forty can reach another 30 and 40. And we figured that would be a way to just keep on networking, talk about what's going on in the world, current world events. Um, yeah, go ahead, Brooks. I'll let you get in on this because, uh, you know, I can't, we can't tell the story about Hear Me Out podcast without Brooks, man. Brooks and I, uh, we basically like seen it from like the blueprint to, you know, where we're at now. So go ahead and get Brooks in on this, man. Yeah. So like you said, it was, it was myself. It was Pedro. We got a friend Brady and our, and my friend uh, Simon on there. Um, ended up Simon ended up bowing out. He had other commit commitments going on, so we added a um, someone who was supposed to be our like our radio producer and someone who brought some more creative ideas in Muzzy. Um, and we had like he, he recommended doing the music stuff and the pop culture stuff. You know things that can be relatable to an audience outside of just sports collaborations that's where we started the collaborations because yeah, exactly. before it was just in-house and then we started kind of even with a small channel it was just collaborations exactly yes yeah. so we were able to focus really on a lot of the or local talent we're from you know dc maryland virginia area so we wanted to get talent from that area um really be able to expand their work and expand their their audience i guess with ours so that's what we did for a little while um you know, and it was a lot of fun. Uh, we were able to really learn not just about creative people in our area, but about ourselves and how we want to interview people, how we want to be as a group. Um, eventually, ended up it ended up becoming just Pedro and I, uh, just because of time commitments and and other things going on in our lives. Frankie and, J too, Brendoza as well. Yeah, and shout out to to well, yeah, to to definitely Pedro's girlfriend because he she's the one who helps do our thumbnails and. Help us bring a lot of ideas to the group. Um, you know, helped start doing stuff for our parties whenever we wanted to do our our podcast anniversary, which was just yesterday. Uh, yep. Yeah, three years. Happy three years. Hear me three on years. podcast. So, uh, and I mean, other than my current relationship, this is the second best relationship I've ever had <laughs> with anybody. You know, <laughs> but um, yeah, you know, it's been a it's been a rocky road, but a great road at the same time. Just you know, really getting out of our comfort zone trying to figure out what it is that we want hear me out to be and that's when bruno came along when franco came along because uh he really had us three of us sit down and figure out what it is exactly that we want to do we knew we wanted to do sports and we want we knew we wanted to do uh pop culture and franco brought on uh politics progressive politics exactly and um you know ever since then our our channel has grown a whole lot more uh we're at what 300 380 subscribers right now uh our views have gotten a whole lot bigger congratulations and, um Appreciate that. You know, and i have to thank as as crazy as it's been as, as it's been i think i have to thank the quarantine and the pandemic for absolutely know, to down and sit down and actually <laughs> be able to create some content because you put up a whole lot over these past couple months um right it's kind of I want to piggyback off of what yeah. Brooks is saying and what and what Kit was saying too about having to learn certain things from scratch 
we learned how to use SoundCloud at first without having any prior knowledge about it, right? Just put it out there, kind of learn as we go. We we didn't want to get in the mindset of, you know, having to let's not put anything out yet because we don't know yet. And then, you know, we end up procrastinating. We just went right ahead and just tried it, trial and error. Some stuff was bad. Matter of fact, a lot of stuff was bad until it started getting good and people would give us advice like, yo, if you would turn the volume down, we'll start listening. Hey, if you'll start segmenting things, we'll listen. Hey, if you do this and like our viewers were giving us suggestions on what they like, what they don't like. And of course, my girlfriend, uh, Brenda, as like she's always been, you know, keeping us, you know, giving us suggestions, telling us, you know, th certain things that don't make sense and that do make sense. Keeping us on track when we when we get off track with certain discussions that we have. And um, over time, we figured, hey, we're doing this audio thing all the time why not put our face on it as well? And that's when we went to YouTube. Yep. Uh, the SoundCloud growth was, you know, slight, but it really is what you put into it. And I would say we were doing about like two days a week. We weren't doing it like every day, like six days a week, like how we are now. But, you know, the growth is what you, it, it is however much work you put into it. As you can see with uh, Franco, for example, you know, he, he put his Twitter out not too long ago and is almost at a thousand subscribers or a thousand followers because, He's out there, you know, putting content out. It's, it's what you do with the content is, is, is what's you're going to come back with. The, your 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 content will reflect on, you know, the growth afterwards. But we started putting out videos and we learned certain things that do work and that don't work. Strong titles, strong thumbnails, search terms are important. And then we started to learn over time that YouTube suppression does exist because there's certain videos that they don't let you post. As like you said, that they may copyright flag for whatever reason. That that's usually copyright is not usually too much uh, like suppressing. That usually happens with like music and stuff. But yeah, the suppression is very real. There's certain things that they definitely don't want you to see, and we'll get more into that uh, a little bit further into this episode. But um, we just figured matching our faces with our audios was the most important thing for the podcast to be able to really introduce ourselves to the people that had already been listening from SoundCloud. So we built a platform on SoundCloud. We had some people on Audio Mac, some people there, Apple Podcasts, and just kind of took everybody over to Instagram and YouTube. And that's where we put a majority of our content now. And it's been really fun meeting all these people and um, connections outside of Maryland, even like we met people uh, from different states online. And, you know, some people we've even talked about, you know, meeting up and all that still in the works. But uh yeah, it's a lot of things that we learned, valuable experience. One thing that you mentioned, Kit, is that you had to deactivate your channel at 23K, and then you came back with all the experiences that you had learned from that channel, took it to the other one, where you were able to now have a faster growth because you already know what you're doing. So that's what we've been trying to do is that we go trial and error, see what does and doesn't work, and take what does work and build on that for the next thing because you're going to have to keep reinventing yourself, especially when you're a media outlet you can Absolutely. be hot one day, you can be ice cold the next day. So it's all about how hard you work, consistent you are with the content. If you really are passionate about it, because if you drag yourself through the motions, you know, maybe you'll get some growth, but it just won't be fun, right? right. You have to make sure that you're enjoying it and that you're doing everything, you know, building well on, on, on what does work, kind of eliminating the things that kind of don't work, um, and, and that's really what it is, is just trial and error. It's a big game of trial and error. And um, we try to tell people not to wrap your head around metrics. I know it's easier said than done, but um, what's most important is how much are you really into the content and how consistent are you with it? Because you can put, I think, a channel with seven, view, or seven uh, videos in one week, one video a day, is much better if it's getting like 20, 30 views as opposed to like, one video a month that's getting 100 views. They accumulate over time, and eventually you do end up cracking that YouTube algorithm. It's not impossible. It's hard, but it's not impossible. Once you Absolutely. get into a good rhythm, the algorithm, there is a way to crack the algorithm. And um, I, I'll just go ahead and share that real quick before we move on. The, the one thing that I have noticed about the algorithm is it pushes out a lot of negative stuff, actually. Usually it's... Um, it, it's the algorithm likes to push out things that have to do with capitalizing off someone's plight most times. A lot like our channels, three of our channels biggest hits are videos that either somebody's passing out drunk on a live stream, 
somebody calling out a rapper for whatever reason. What else? Uh, uh, Oprah being arrested for sex trafficking. So you see how YouTube is. Allegedly. They push out things that make people be like, whoa, yeah. click that immediately because that's what people are entertained by. Things like this are sensationalized. And, and we all know how it is with, I think we, we call it the, or it's called the halo effect, right? You see a bunch of people are already watching it and you're like, hmm, I'm going to go ahead and watch that too. So the algorithm has a, a funny way of working. And if you're at the right time, the right place with a good thumbnail, a good title, a good description, and you make sure everything is in the search terms that you put nothing else like that's not related to your video. Like if you put baseball and you're talking about football, then that could be bad for the algorithm. Like it's going to maybe even shadow ban you, like suppress you a little bit. I know that Instagram does that. I'm sure YouTube does that as well. So if you're at the right time, the right place, and usually it's a controversial thing, like a maybe a live stream or something like that, those get huge the uh, views on YouTube and could lead to more subscribers. Just uh, some free game, man. I really shouldn't be telling telling y'all this for free, but I thought I'd go ahead and share that one time. And before I, I throw it over to you, kid, I just want to say, like, um, Pedro and Brooks, they're great commentators when it comes. Like, Pedro, no, he's he's very he's a very knowledgeable sports guy. So is Brooks. Uh, Brooks writes a lot of great articles on sports. I defer to this guy, man. With the sports commentating, I always am going to defer to Brooks, man. I respect his opinion so much. And All catch right. him on these. Well, thank you. He's local with it. That's one thing that Hear Me Out podcast has been really big on is working in the community with the talents like rappers, uh, athletes, models, you name it. You know, uh, anybody that's promoting anything. You know, it doesn't even have to be social media. It could just be if you want to come on and get some promotion for your your personal training brand. We interviewed a personal trainer who we now are pretty good friends with, I would say. Two of them. Yeah, yeah. two of them. And, and it's been great just staying in the community and knowing that we are and we're not charging anybody any money. We're not doing anything crazy like that. It's all like just good local link ups to show that, you know, we need to support each other. That's how a lot of these big world cities they end up and especially in this country like like los angeles and uh i guess you could say atlanta these guys are very collective in their support with each other and it's easier for youtube channels and media outlets and stuff like that to do collaborations and grow you know when there's support in the local area first and then it ends up branching out everywhere else yeah so like, what i saw you know was that a lot of young people they like to watch they like to, they prefer to listen to stuff like sports and pop culture which which pedro is also very knowledgeable about um and so like when i started seeing a lot of misinformation among people like in our age group um you know when, when i started seeing all these memes about you know world war three but people not understanding how we got here they're not understand they're not that in tune with what's going on in politics like how you and i are kid um so I wanted to serve as a gateway for people um, who are not that into politics, but I'm there with Joe and, and Brooks talking about some of this stuff. And they're like, they're asking me like, okay, why is this happening? And I tell them, you know, why it's happening. I went, I went out to DC and I um, went to these anti-war protests and I interviewed uh, Medea Benjamin and Anya Perenpal where they explained, you know, why the, the attack on, I, on, uh, you know, the general of Iran happened. Um, and so that that was one way that I thought I could inform more people is to grow a channel that not just talks about politics, but also talks about uh, what's in our pop culture. Um, so, yeah, I just want I just want to hear from you. Okay, what 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 plans do you guys have in Heartlands Media uh, in order to reach more people so that they can be informed? Uh, because there is some some some. Uh, the silver lining here is that we're more united. We're fighting back. We're doing collaborations like this, um, and that that's that's really helpful. I, I can gladly uh, give give my two cents into that. Um, diversify your content. Uh, yeah. Be on different platforms. Rockfin is one of them. Um, as I said before, Rockfin's been very good to us, um, and it's uh, perhaps maybe one of the new frontiers to be on in regards to social media. Also, with YouTube channels too, diversify your YouTube channels. Uh, you got to be careful what you say on YouTube, and of course, um, you can always use Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram too as well. But they're not in the business of really promoting and you know keeping content creators financially stable. They're all in it for themselves. So 
YouTube, Rockfin, and any other platform, Spotify, you know, they'll be able to help out content creators even further. Um, another thing, too, is learning as you go. I mean, shout out to Pedro, for example, you know, learning how to use Adobe Premiere, learn how to use editing technology, learn how to improve. Not easy. Uh, reach like, out, yeah, oh. you know, and your audience also gives you advice, too. Listen to your audience. I mean, they're your supporters, your Patreon supporters. Listen to them because if they're willing to give you advice and say, hey, I like your stuff, but if you do X, Y, and Z, you guys will do so much better. They're not saying it out because they hate you or anything. It's not saying it because they're being you know, mean to you. They're giving you constructive criticism. And sometimes you know, when a fan says, hey, I love you guys, but you're sucking at this, there ain't, you know, you got to learn to take constructive criticism because they respect your work. And if you build up a following to where you have people who can give you constructive criticism to improve yourself, treasure it like it's gold because it's not easy, especially when you do build a channel up and you have to shut it down and move forward. But if you learn everything as you go along, it's not easy to learn Adobe Premiere. It is not easy to learn how to use camera gear and equipment and audio equipment. It's not easy also conducting interviews. But if you improve yourself, practice makes perfect. Learn as you go. And if you think you're going to, let, let's say you, you break the YouTube algorithm, you're doing good on all the social media platforms and you're on top. Do not ever assume that you're never going to learn anything new. Never assume that no one can teach you anything because if you're going to be arrogant enough to say no one can teach me, no one, I should not listen to anyone, I am not willing to do this because I'm on top, well then you're going to be knocked off that mountain. You have to evolve. You have to adapt. This is a fun job to be a content creator. It is a fun thing to do. The rewards are, are incredible. It's outstanding. It is fun. But notice, I said it's a fun job. It is still a job in the end. And if you don't love it, if you're not willing to make that sacrifice, walk away. If you're willing to just be on top of the mountain and say no one can teach you anything, people will walk away from you. And the thing is, too, it's just not you doing all the hard work. I mean, yes, you're doing the work. You're going out there. You're covering stories. You're you know, having uh, individuals on your show. But... It's you pushing forward and showing others that you can do this. And if you have a team backing you up, so shout out to my colleague Daniel, shout out to Gunnar, who's our editor, shout out to Jerome, who's our other editor, shout out to Kira and Lainey, as well as uh, John and Jose and Mona, who's uh, a moderator for our chats. You know, it's it's your team, it's your support group that really gets you forward. I mean, there's there is that mythos of a self-made person, but that's non-existent. It's always through work and collaboration and pushing forward. And if you have uh, Patreon supporters, time. if you have Patreon supporters who are helping you out, who are you know giving you financial resources to push forward, yeah, they're helping you out. But what are you going to do with that support? Because if you're not going to show them that you're not going to be doing the work or improving yourself or either either that expanding and covering stories that corporate media is not covering or doing something that no one else is doing, people will walk away. You have to be aggressive. You have to show people that you care. Case in point, uh, I went to cover this one protest, right? And it got done earlier, but I was feeling a little down because it ended quicker than I expected it to. And I had a day off from the studio, but I love my studio. And I was feeling down and depressed, and I love driving to my studio. So I got in my car, drove to the studio because I love going there because that's my studio. And that's where my team is at. That's where our supporters are at because I love doing this. And those three years creating all that content and then now hitting that reset button and starting all over again, it's, it's, it's incredible. I love it. It's great work, but it's still work in the end, and you're building trust with the community. And if you don't show people that you're willing to be a leader and step forward for them, walk away from this business. Walk away from it all because – I love the fact that when we get our commentators saying, hey, I never knew that you guys were covering this story. Hey, that was a great interview that you're doing. Oh, my God, I didn't know this corruption was happening. I didn't know this uh, cover-up was happening. I didn't know all this stuff was going on. People need to organize and plan. When you inspire others, it is incredible. And that's why I like doing progressive independent media. That's why I like not having to deal with some TV manager or some radio manager yelling at me because – Oh, you can't talk about this. You can't talk about it. I could talk whatever I want to on my studio, and I have viewers and subscribers helping us and supporting us out, 
And more importantly, collaboration is key because if you're not willing to collaborate and talk to new content creators or work with other bigger content creators, you know, wh why are you here? You have to collaborate because we get messages all the time like, hey, you should be on this person's show or you should be on yeah. this person's show. Or even uh, you, Franco, when you reached out to me, I was like, yeah, sure. I was in your shoes once. I'll be I'll gladly be on your show. Yeah. It, Collaboration it, is key. Collaboration is key. It, it's scary to start too. Like at first I was really hesitant. Like I'm I'm a natural introverted person, but I felt like I ha I mean um I have to do something to help out the progressive community. That needs to be more voices out there and I can show people after four years the growth that I can do, you guys can have that growth too. And I see that you know, with you, how you guys started out by just filming with your phones, uh, Nico House filming with his phone in his car. Uh, you, you know, they, they had a start that was not, you know, it wasn't perfect. No one, like, if you go to any of these channels, you can, like, you can look at their oldest content. It looks completely different from how it is now. Like, they, they've grown a lot. Imagine in, in four years how much more growth there will be. Imagine how much more growth there will be for us in HMO Podcast and for for Hardlands Media in four years. Imagine where you guys will be, you know. So, it, it you have to get uncomfortable. You have to be comfortable with getting uncomfortable in order to inform more people and do something positive for this world. It, um, it, takes, it takes a lot of courage to put yourself out there. It takes a lot of guts to be willing to do it and it's never going to be perfect there's no such thing as perfect because it's non-existent it's just if, you, if you're going to be dedicated to it practice makes perfect and keep pushing forward and improving yourself you will always learn something new and that's the whole gig of being in youtube or on rockfin or any other social media platform just be hungry for it but show others that you're willing to be that leader show others that you care and that you know if, if, if you're unable to do that, then maybe this is a, a too big of a mountain for you to climb and just walk away. But if you keep pushing forward, again, it's, 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 if you were to time travel and tell me in 2016 that I would have three YouTube channels, my own studio, be on Rockfin, and collaborate with other larger YouTube content creators, I would have called you a liar or said, well, how is that possible? You've got to put in the work. Yeah. Yeah, and before... Okay. I just wanted to say that um I mean and and Franco and, and Pedro can tell you this themselves. I am the biggest critique of myself and just of what we do in our videos sometimes. And I feel like as we've been able to transition from this just being a hobby to I like to say it's like a passion project for for me and for Pedro and for Franco that, you know, we've really gotten we've really started to care a lot more about this product that we put out because before, like Pedro was saying, we were just putting it out letting it be whatever it was and now you know we've learned adobe premiere we've because we used to use iMovie so now our edits are getting a lot better uh we paid to help get a an intro for one of our videos franco's franco put up his own intro for franco analysis and for hmo like we've learned a whole lot more and we've decided to really just like invest in ourselves invest in our videos all of that good stuff and i think it's just because we swallowed our pride and understood that this is something that can be great if we put the work in and in 2020 everything going on like we've really decided to do that and that was one of the greatest blessings to have two people in my life that really want to make these things great and invest in each other and support each other and all that great stuff yeah man if i could just piggyback off that i would say i mean for anybody who who's seen star wars y'all know what yoda says he says do or do not there is no try so, I mean, that's when, when people say, you know, I'll, I'll try to start a YouTube. I'll try to do this. I'll try to do that. It's just pushing it off. It's, um, you know, it, it's hard. It's tough to, to get started. I think getting started is the hardest part. But getting into it and just being consistent with it, no matter what it is, if it's a, you know, everyday job or just a hobby, you know, you have to be consistent with it no matter what. I mean, how else are you going to find out if you're good or not? At it? You know, putting putting it out and getting critique is, you know, I guess you could say, you know, putting out bad content, you'll learn everything you need to know. You'll be able to know what you can build off of. And if you go a long time and it never gets any better, then you have to be able to rebrand, do something else. As you said, we've went through several different shakeups for Hear Me Out podcast. We've had three or four different looks where we had to just completely rebrand, 
And I would just say, you know what, new logo, new this, you know, we're just going to go ahead and change it all up. There's been several different times where we just completely rebranded. And every time it seems like each rebrand is going further and further in the right direction that works to get a little bit of extra traction. Now, sometimes we get kind of slow, but the biggest thing that we've been able to do to not hit like a, a block of discouragement to say is that we don't really focus on our, you know, we haven't been getting too many subscribers. We still just keep making the content and we keep, you know, networking as much as we can. You know, our followers may grow in other places. YouTube, as you guys said, it's like sometimes you just go like, I think we've gone probably two, three weeks. I haven't really got more than like 10 subscribers, but that's not going to stop us from putting out any content. I think as far as YouTube suppression goes, that's probably what they want. They want channels to be like, man, you know, it's not worth it. But that that's really it's really not the case. You know, it, you just have to keep going until you break that mold and the consistency. Man, I can't, you can't stress it enough. The consistency is so important. And, you know, just got to keep at it. Got to keep at it. Make sure you love it. Like you said, don't drag your feet through it. And you'll get eventually where you want to be at. But another thing, too, and this has to deal with, I think, the individual viewer who watches YouTube. Look. The censorship is real, and you know the suppression isn't just towards independent press. It's towards everyone else who's involved, whether it's sports or makeup or uh, entertainment, television or documentaries. I mean, you know, there's a lot of individual content creators out there, and each of them, in their own right, is being suppressed by YouTube. And YouTube is right now, um, you know, hiding what individual content creators are putting up there. So you got people working twice as hard. So to a lot of viewers and subscribers, you're not being unsubscribed on purpose. You're not being blocked on purpose. It's YouTube and its algorithm doing that in favor to corporations. So always double check and triple check on your favorite content creators, no matter you know what what your beliefs are or or, who, or you know who you follow. But you know if you're if you're noticing that you're not being aware or, or getting any kind of notifications from any of your favorite YouTubers double check on that channel you might have been unsubscribed or either that it's just purposely blocking you because they want to direct you towards the corporate establishment media which is crap i mean it's not entertaining the sitcoms are not funny the news is not informative the sports analysis doesn't really go down to the real facts about what's happening with your favorite teams whether it's on the national team or any other kind of you know local teams you know it's it's just bland Whereas, let's look at our perspectives. We are out there on the streets. We are out there amongst the people. And that's what people want, the real stuff. And that's entertainment in one, in one hand, but also informative and empowering in the other. And a lot of people like that more than what the neoliberal soup that's being presented before us. No one wants that. People want steak, baked potatoes. A glass of wine and some nice dessert, all right? All right. No offense to anyone else that doesn't like meat or anything else, but, you know, hey, whatever dish you want, you don't want that neoliberal stale soup and that dry bread. I'm pretty sure we all prefer the dish we want over what corporate media gives us. And you can see, like, with the progressive pol political channels, they have way more likes than the mainstream channels that get pushed. They have, like, less than 100 likes, but, like, a million views. Right. And then, like channels like yours and Jimmy Doors, you, you guys get like a thousand or, or, or in the tens of thousands of likes with mm -hmm. like very little dislikes. So it clearly shows like people like uh, people like genuine channels, you know, and the mainstream media is not genuine. Um, I, I think I just, I just want to make one quick right. comment there. Um, I just think it's funny or it's interesting rather that you have like the the big media journalists at like CNN, MSNBC, uh, Fox, ESPN, whatever it may be. But now with just the technology that we have, you know, we're able to get these things on, on like Windows and MacBooks and all that. Anybody can be an, a journalist now and anybody can inform an audience. And I think that's one of the beneficial things about YouTube is being able to create your own thing and be able to inform people that the way you want to do it instead of just trying to fear monger or play to one side or whatever it may be like you don't have to be biased all the time to make people want to watch you you right. can be accurate while playing both sides or making sure that both sides are portrayed accurately perspectives also, are important right i also want to add this out just to content creators right now i know things look a little bleak 
But I'm going to say something that is very important, and everyone needs to take this to heart, whether you are started, starting out or you're a seasoned veteran in social media. I know times are very tough, and everyone is struggling, but the main goal I say to all of you is survive. Survive as much as you can, however you can. Keep on pushing forward and don't give up. Take, for example, here in Chicago, my colleague Lainey Peterson uh, covered a story that's very devastating to hear. But, you know, a lot of media outlets are letting people go or cutting their pay or shutting down their studios. And this has to deal with radio and television studio networks that are local affiliates in Chicago. I don't know if Philadelphia is dealing with the same thing, too. But in Chicago, that's happening. And it's going to keep on getting worse. I mean, we're still dealing with this economic crisis, this pandemic and this housing crisis and so many other stuff that people are dealing with. Um, and right now, what's keeping Heartland's media pushing forward is our Patreon supporters and our outstanding viewers and subscribers who share our content on social media. And if Heartland's media is able to survive this, you know, we could be one of the last independent media networks and studios in Chicago. And then we could start doing some good. Because look at how corporate media has just been giving us stagnant stuff. Mm -hmm. You've got to survive. However which way you can, keep on surviving and do not give up. Do not back down. YouTube shut down our older channel. But did that stop us? No. We came back with three YouTube channels and on Rockfin. You just got to be hungry for it and keep pushing for it. And more importantly, love what you do. I love being a reporter. I love being an investigative journalist. I love bringing in people who are fighting a good fight, doing more good than I am, and giving them a platform to speak out against police brutality, police corruption, political corruption, doing good for their community, or running for office to bring in real change that is desperately needed. That's outstanding to do, and I love doing that. You yep. just got to keep pushing forward. I want to like add on to that just a little bit. One thing about giving a platform to people that wouldn't be able to speak otherwise is very important for this exact reason. We see a lot of things, right? Tragedies like the George Floyd incident, like Breonna Taylor, but there are so many George Floyds and Breonna Taylors that we'll never know about because no one's able to find them. No one's able to, no one's covering that. They're not out there. So for us to be, you know, small YouTube channels or any anybody really with uh, that's promoting this stuff, go out there and speak to somebody who never would have had the chance to speak anywhere else. We have, you know, passion, conversations with people who are very passionate and have gone through certain things and shine a light where, you know, it otherwise would not have been shining. You know, hear perspectives from people out in the street, people out at the protests, just having people on and speaking. It's very important. Mm -hmm. so I think we can transition now to another topic. Uh, Pedro, you have time to stay or, or you, you got to go? Yeah, six o'clock, guys. One thing I want to add before I head out, though, is this. Uh, you were asking me about, and the whole reason I'm out in Philly right now, just for anybody, if I haven't already mentioned that, I am in Philadelphia right now. We're from Maryland, Silver Spring, Maryland, about 20 minutes away from Washington, D.C. And um, I'm out in Philadelphia right now. I've been kind of going to a couple different cities to do drone videography and photography. So over the last year, I've been getting into that. Kit was asking me before the show how okay. I got my drone license uh, from the FAA. I'll get to that in just a second, but I really just learned how to fly drones casually because I thought it was cool. Anybody that's really played video games that has hand-eye coordination, it's pretty easy to learn. It's scary. You'll probably crash, but if you're able to, it's just like content creation. I took things that I learned from creating content with Hear Me Out podcast into my learning of flying a drone and expanding that hobby and now business because I launched my drone uh, my drone photography and videography services last month, like a month and a half ago. I took the lessons from Hear Me Out, like listening to what people have to say, Shut being up, consistent okay. with the work. And it's and even through the podcast, I've been able to have gigs with the drone stuff. And you know, I, I shot a music video for a guy we interviewed like two years ago, a guy who sometimes we interview a guest, we never hear from him again. And then other times there's situations like this where, you know, I, I have regular contact with the guy and he hits me up for a music video. It's fantastic. And, you know, certain things that we take from from uh, hear me out to the drone stuff. And as far as getting the license, it was really easy. I studied for about two to three months on the 
remote pilot ground school app and it really is just like again just like content creation you get what you put into it so i studied hard for three months i go and take the test i pass with 86 percent on my first try easy easy peasy and then after that just keep it going i was working in the dark for a long time a year where i didn't post any of my stuff i might post an occasional photo every now and then but i really wasn't showing my drone work to too many people i come out after a year and now I'm just flooding the internet with content and networking as much as possible. I was really drawing the blueprint for a year to be able to launch this business and be able to be ready financially and you know with the right people and um, having the right equipment and all that. But yeah, just taking skills from one thing or taking experiences and the the losses from you know the previous endeavor into this one and it's it's been really really fun i'm out in philadelphia uh i got a crazy story for you guys but i think i'm gonna save that for the next episode about what happened yesterday with the the drone stuff i'll let you guys know about that later but yeah man, i love philadelphia and the the last thing i want to say before i hand it back off to you guys is this really if you love something it doesn't feel like work at all you know you're you're doing something you're you're putting your money into it and you're putting your time into your sacrificing things. You're sacrificing sleep at times. You're sacrificing social things, you know, like hanging out with friends and uh, playing video games or whatever it is. I don't know, going to the bar, things that people like to do, especially now in quarantine. There's not much to do. But um, when you really love something and you're passionate about it, 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 it's so easy to just do it every single day. It doesn't feel like work. Uh, I got my girlfriend over here. She's currently painting. She's been selling paintings all month. And she's been just at it ever since we've been on the podcast. It's um, I really encourage anybody to just pursue what you love and don't worry about anything, about it being bad at first, about how long is it going to take. Just dive into it. And if you feel like you really love it, you're going to end up getting good at it. It's repetition. 10,000 hours, you're going to be a pro at it. You know, you just got to keep at it. You got to you can't get to your 10,000 hours in one hour you have to get started you have to get it going get a routine going sacrifice certain things and you know eventually you'll be able to do certain things like come out here in philadelphia i've I've been able to network a little bit here in new york and new jersey and i'm hoping i can spread my work across the country and eventually globally and that'll be really fun to do not only for the drone stuff but for hear me out podcast you know we want we want to be local but we also want to be global too so you got to yes, just make sir. sure you love it. Yes, sir. That's yeah, right. I, I got to piggyback on all that for sure. Just uh, being able to find things that we that we really care about and really want to do like for a long time. Like p- podcasts was stuff that Pedro was mainly doing for a good minute until he really invested into the drone work. Like he and I worked on something together that I put up on, a, on another YouTube page. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we did the music videos, all that good stuff. You know, even Brenda, like she used to do makeup and now she's doing paintings and, and that's become really successful for her. So like, right, this is just something that's become really, really beneficial for all of us to find things that we want to do outside of just the podcast, because that's the most important thing that you can do is be able to be successful on your own instead of just like within one group. And I'm sure that happens with Heartlands Media as well. You know, I, I know you're not just doing Heartlands. I know you're doing things with other YouTube coll- youtubers and content creators and all that good stuff absolutely never do it by yourself you need a team you know i mean whether it's you know there's individual acts out there but those people they got a team you know whether it's just one person doing everything and someone else is just promoting you have to have a team you know it's going to be the most effective way to be able to to really get a good amount of work done and a, a good amount of time so, you know, definitely invest and collaborate. The most important thing, you know, and don't be scared to invest in yourself. Spend a little money, you know, mm-hmm. o- over time it will pay off. Over time it definitely will pay off. But guys, I'm going to go ahead and, and be off of this call on that note. Kit, it was a pleasure meeting you. Hard, hard Lens Media. Uh, I want to say one thing. My next location that I'm going to be going for drones most likely is Chicago. I was considering between Chicago and Utah. And I figured Utah might not be the best idea right now. Uh, it's actually cheaper to go out to uh, Chicago. I might drive out there. We'll see. But if I do go to Chicago, okay. 
I would love to do a drone shot for you. 100% for free. I, I want to give you a drone shot for your channel. Okay. Okay. I'm going to hold you accountable for that one. Uh, All I ask of you is just tag, tag drone by dro, and uh, you'll, you got yourself a, a drone clip for your channel. That's okay. Drone, by drone on Instagram and Twitter. Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. Okay. Here, listen, pri uh, private message me on social media. I'll give you my email and then we'll go over the details. Uh, with that later, okay? So let me know when you're heading out to Chicago so I can let my team know, let my editor know, so that way we can uh, uh, cross-collaborate and promote, all right? Absolutely, uh, absolutely, right? kid. And I'm hoping that'll be in the next couple months. I will keep you posted. Gentlemen, oh. it's a pleasure as always, man. I, I love Dang. recording with Brooks and Franco. Um, one last shout out to Franco, man, for restructuring our mental because we were kind of stagnant. We were not really sure how we were going to run this channel, but we really got organized with it. Every every facet has kind of been figured out and, you know, we're still working on the scheduling, but, you know, little by little, we fix one thing at a time. You know, we don't dwell on anything. And, um, you know, obviously we've had our, our disagreements, you know, but at the end of the day, we're all adults and we're able to, you know, communicate. Communication is the most important thing, you know, whether it's just a friendship or a partnership communication is the most important thing and, and that's i think has really been something that all three of us have been you know super crisp on in 2020 you know we've been able to just see eye to eye with everything at the end of the day and, and it's great i love how everything's been going hear me out podcast and uh and yeah man so i'll let you guys off on that you guys have a great rest of your afternoons and you know goodbye from brenda all right, all right. <laughs>